Hello. Today I'm going to talk about Jackrabbit's strategy. The new strategy module is very intense and quite capable of producing some very interesting results. But I do need to warn you, it is extremely aggressive on your hardware. I crashed my tablet trying to do this video. So I'm using my laptop, so excuse the sound quality. Now I've loaded Jackrabbit Strategy with the very basic settings. Now the basic settings show a loss of 48 cents and only closed four trades. So let's go play around with these and see if we can't get some interesting results. I'm going to set this up to be more aggressive than Jay Arling. I know that doesn't sound like it's possible considering how aggressive Jay Arling is. But when you set your technical analysis up in this way, is actually far more aggressive. And this is actually what crashed my tablet. It's really having an effect on my laptop, knocking my mouse out all over the place. Okay, so here we are, complete mess. This shows 228 trades, or excuse me, $228 at a loss, even though it's 49% profitable. Now let's turn this around. Let's go down to the Pivot Hunter. It's easy to use, first we gotta turn it on. It's easy to use and it produces reasonable results. And let's turn off Tiger Watch and Spear Watch for now. So all we have is just Pivot Hunter and the advanced technical analysis at its most aggressive state. Nice and simple. Okay, now let's change our pivots from boundary one to boundary two. Let's see how it affects things. It's going to take a few minutes to recalculate everything. Okay, we just made a profit. So right out of the box, we've got a profit. Not much, but a 65% success rate, it's not bad at all. Okay, so let's see what else we can do. Okay, so. Let's add. Oops, we don't want that. With this. Let's add some sideways analysis and see if we can't maybe make it a little better. Get rid of some of the sideways or ranging action. See if we can't cut down some of the bad positions. Actually, no. Some of those sideways positions gave us profitable. Okay, let's take the technical analysis out. Let's see what happens just between Pivot Hunter and Sideways Analysis. And it's taking a while, it's grunting away. And I think I broke it. <laughs> Yep, I did. 
you're going to see this a lot. Some combinations actually move the situation beyond the limits. In this case, it timed out. Now for this, we can actually fix that problem just by changing the time frame and changing back. And it will hopefully recalculate it and work this time. Timeouts are common when you really have a lot of aggressive mathematics. That's normal. That's something that's an easy fix to. Let's see if it loads or if it times out again. And nope, it keeps timing out, which means this combination simply won't work. You're going to have that a lot. The strategy tester does break easily. Be aware of that. That's a combination you do need to be aware of. So let's try and the pivot hunter. And this is really how you figure out some of the best trades you're going to get with some of your markets. Not every market is going to be profitable. So that's something to be aware of. Okay, there's J.R. Ling. Now let's go down to pivot hunter. Let's set this back to the default pivots and see how well it works. And of course, you'll see the chart update here. And yep, we have more here. So let's put our buy pivot to two and our sell pivot to two. It actually did worse. This combination is not working well at all for the one minute candlestick for this coin. So there we are. Now, if you was to try a different coin, this closes, same settings, same candlestick. Let's move to a different coin. Okay, not as bad. Actually take your settings and see how you're going to perform on different coins. Right now the market, well, actually the market is pretty well right here. 78% success rate is very good. So things to think about when you're testing your strategies. Look for different coins, look for different time frames. You might be surprised at what you actually find. For example, this does well to one minute, but it does not do well at the five minute. Let's go back to the one minute. Okay, let's go and let's turn off the pivot hunter. And let's go to momentum. Now, momentum is a bit of an unusual indicator. Fibonacci based, so it takes a little bit of time getting used to it. Okay, so we come down here and momentum. Let's set our depth to about 14. I've played with this enough that I found some pretty good numbers to work with. As you work with it, you get some ideas. And you can begin seeing how well these will work. So as you increase the depth, we're starting to see profits. 95%. That is exceptional but we're only doing 61 trades. So it's not a very fast strategy. Only 
0.14 and requiring 2300 candlesticks, but it's good for large position sizes. Net profit 8.83%. Let's stop right here. Let's look at the performance chart. All the longs did well and the shorts did well. So depending upon which market you wanted, or both of them, you could actually do well in both. You can even inspect the various trades, see how long they lasted, see which direction they went. Well, this looks like something that could be taken into a paper trader if you don't have a large budget. 116 profit factor. That's not bad. Okay, let's go do some deeper analysis. Let's set our base currency. And now we will set the base currency here. And we'll do a position size of 11. Okay, let's do a commission. Let's tell that we want real-time data. Now the benefit here is we can actually have this run real-time data and not only do back testing, but we can do forward testing as well. So there we are. 120 deals, 90% success rate, 68 profit factor. This is a very good place to start. This could go into a paper trader and start giving some very generous results. We can then take and tune the dollar cost averaging, trailing stop loss, all of the mechanics that your platform supports. So be sure to really look at this. Take your time analyzing different results. Not all combinations are going to be profitable. But through time and careful analysis, you will find one that you can take a near indicator and actually begin testing in the paper trader. And once you've done this, and the paper trader analysis, you can actually begin trading real money with it. Now, if you was to do this with, say, a $100 position, 90%, that's $90 profit of an average for your positions. So there's aggregated ways that you can really look at your different trading specifications. Don't get locked in one particular style one particular mindset. This is the one minute. What happens if we move to the five minute? Well, that's a big jump, and we didn't change anything but the time frame. Of course, we don't have as high of a success rate, but we have more profit. What happens if we go to the 15 minute? We're doing better. More profit, but not as much profitability. Okay, let's go to the 30 minute. We keep going up, even though we keep going down here. So there's ways to really tune this to give you a good, quick oversight that you can dig in, then begin exploring deeper results. Let's keep going. It's not bad at all. And of course, keep your trader's journal handy, even though you might not want to use this particular setting now. The fact that this setting is producing these results might be something you want to look at in the future. Write this stuff down. A lot of experiments 
will take place here. Those experiments can lead to profits in different areas and different markets. And we're starting to see some very good results. But of course, when you look at the time frames, you begin to see how long it takes to achieve those results. So you can begin your budgeting appropriate to these time frames and mix long and short term trading simultaneously. Let's move to one day. And yep, we broke the system. Simply not enough information to provide an analysis. Even Bitcoin doesn't provide enough information at this level. So that's always things to be aware of when you're looking at different combinations. And right now, surprisingly, this is working well for Bitcoin. Let's go to the one minute chart. Works well for the one minute chart. Okay. Works well for Bitcoin Cash. Works well for ADA. So we have right here a very simple combination that appears to work well for all of the top 13 coins. Let's see. ADA looks good. Bitcoin Cash looks good. Bitcoin looks good, but low on the profitability. EOS doesn't look good. Okay, Ethereum looks good. Ethereum Classic looks good. Ethereum itself doesn't look good. Oh, Train Link doesn't look good. Well, three bad coins for this particular mindset combination. Four bad coins out of 13. Which, as you can tell, different coins are going to perform at different rates. 82% success rate. For Ripple, that is astonishing. This coin is extremely difficult to work with. Fifty-two percent and a loss, so five losses. Five coins will do poorly out of thirteen. Stellar, another coin is difficult to work with. Seventy-nine percent. Let's just go out on a limb. Very hard coin to work with. Let's see how it does. Yep, it does. Again, things to look for when you're actually testing. Well, this particular strategy does well a lot of different things, but not every coin. Let's take a look at it again. Okay, I'm going to leave it here for a few seconds. And I'll scroll it. That way you can take a look at this and test it for yourself. Maybe you'll find more combinations that make this even better. The whole point of the new system is to make sure it is not limited by my trading ability. Jackrabbit's limits are only based upon your own trading capabilities and how you see the market. But not every combination is going to do well. And as you can see, one size doesn't fit all need to take the time to tune for each and every coin to maximize your profits.
That is important. Just don't do a blanket, oh, this will work on everything, and then load up on 20 coins. Take your time. Test each coin carefully. Look for the different opportunities. Try to figure out different time frames that might give you a better assessment for that coin. Also, using short time frames and long time frames is a nice hedge against your risk. So you can weigh out different risk factors in a way that will let you balance your resources no matter which direction the market turns. As you can see, there are a lot of settings here to actually check. Including something that I haven't talked about, but I'm going to as soon as we get to it. Going to go nice and slow here. Let's talk about the dead man switch. Well, it's very simple. You pick the percentage you want it to work on. I'm going to pick 5%. Now, I'm going to go all the way back up to the top. I'm going to find it. And I'm going to turn it on. Now, right now, I have it set to block all buys that go below 5%. Let's find a chart that matches that criteria. Might take some doing. I even have to play around with different coins. A 5% drop in the dead man switch is not the same as the dagger hunter that looks for a single candlestick. The dead man switch actually looks at a series of candlesticks to try to determine its that qualification. Might need to drop it to 3%. Because, yep. Not dropping. So let's just drop it to a level that is, I know will trigger. Be sure you play with it though. I wouldn't try this personally in real money because it will definitely lead to losses. Should see it here. It's probably just blocking. I'm going to have to test this because we should actually be seeing that. One way to find out. And yes, you can load the indicator at the same time as the strategy. That is helpful. Right now, I'm not going to mess with anything but the dead man switch. Find out if the strategy's got a glitch in it. Okay, dead man switch. It might be one of those unusualities for This is 1%. This is what we should see. So I got a glitch in the strategy. But basically, it's not showing the visuals, 
but you can see where all of the bodies would be blocked. So when you're working with your settings, you can actually set it to drop appropriately. And you can literally use both of them to tune back and forth. Uh, okay, there we go. All the dead mans are dropped in various places, but this is a 10% drop. Now, these axes mean if you had panic selling on, it would sell off or liquidate everything you own. If you don't use the panic mode, it just blocks your buys. Now I'm going to work on a strategy to figure out why this is not showing up. But that gives you an idea of what to expect, though, for the dead man switch. Let's get rid of this, and we'll go back into the strategy tester. So it's just not showing the indicators, but it is showing the effect of it. So visual error. Okay. Now you can see the effect it has on the price. By not making those purchases, what was a profit is now a negative. You can see that again with the other coin, the impact. Now, this is still profitable even with the dead man switch working. Something to think about if you're looking to hedge against the market. Test, analyze, repeat, paper trade. Look for different combinations that will give you different results. That's how you're going to find winning combinations that do well and don't do well based upon your risk assessment. So now let's come back down here. We'll turn off dead man switch. Let it reevaluate. And now with updated information, it's now showing this coin at a loss. Again, that's the importance of forward and back testing. Jackrabbit now does both. Always look at the results carefully. Always test. Always analyze. And always trade appropriate to your risk assessment. And remember, don't be afraid to try different combinations. You never know what you might find that might actually turn out to work very well. Until next time.